Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2024 BMW X7 facelift. The key is new. This is to lock the car. This is to unlock the car. This is to open the boot and then this is I think for hazard. But this being the M Sport does not have any M colors on the key which is quite surprising. Thankfully though my shoes have the M colors. Anyways this is the G07 version of the BMW X7. The first generation model which is based on the fourth generation of the BMW X5. The G05. Straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay because this is the X Drive 40D. There's a lot of space right here. In fact the engine cover is also different when compared to before strut braces and you get insulation there washer fluid goes in right there and let's just shut this because the design is changed a lot at the front the grill is slightly bigger in fact the grill is closed right now it opens when it needs to breathe there's a camera here it gets six sensors at the front for the front parking sensors of course and these are very similar to the new bmw 7 series as well as the i7 it says bmw led right there there's the cornering light, I think. This is the LED DRL, which also converts into the indicator on the other side. When you turn on the car now, the light does this nice effect. The LEDs inside move. And then that's not all. This car also has... Sound was actually coming because the key is in my pocket. It also blinks the LED very aggressively when it starts. Now, this being the M Sport has a slight different treatment here. Yes, this treatment is different with vents right there. In fact, these air curtains are very much functional too. They channel air for sure. This is the panel for radar for the ADA system. Meanwhile, it says BMW connected drive right there because there are cameras for the lane keep assist as well as for the rain sensor. Now, this is a huge car. In fact, the width is 2 meters. The height is more than 1.8 meters. The wheelbase is more than 3.1 meters and the length is almost 5.2 meters. My goodness, what a huge car. This is the six seater. There's a seven seater version as well. The ride height has been raised right now just to show you. It says M here because M Sport of course. It even says M right there on the blue brake calipers. Tire size is actually big because this is 285, 45, 21s. At the rear too, it's the same 285, 45, 21s. But it does not have as big tires as the X5 which has three not five section tires at the rear. So yes, little chin two tires here comparatively that you can see the suspension of course. In fact, this is a fake treatment which I don't like at all. There's a camera right here and when you unlock the car, it does this sort of a curtain here, light curtain. Meanwhile, it also projects some light from the handle so that you can see exactly where the door handle is. You obviously get roof rails which have to be functional in this car. At this price, you would expect that. So yes, very robust as well. Meanwhile, fuel goes in right here. This is for the AdBlue. This is for the diesel. Let's shut this and come to the rear where not many changes to be honest because it's more or less the same as before but you have this sort of a chrome treatment connecting both the lights. The attention to detail is crazy. It says BMW on the inside. Look at this treatment. When you unlock the car, it does this nice dynamic swipe. Meanwhile, this is actually the rear fog light of the vehicle. It says X-Drive 40D X7 right there. These exhausts are very much real. Yeah, real exhaust, of course, with this chrome surround. You get parking sensor. You obviously get a towing hook and you can see the underbody of the vehicle. Well, this is the cluster architecture. There is the camera, rear wiper, washer. All that obviously works fantastically well. Let's open the boot, which is 326 liters. Okay, this has come open. I think inside here, you obviously get the toolkit. Light placement here, light placement here. And that is, I think, for the fuse box. There's the first aid kit. 12 volt charging socket has been given here. I press this button. There opens the split tailgate. You can actually sit here and enjoy if you so wish. And below here, you've got some amount of storage, which is for the parcel shelf. If you decide to put these seats down, you can use this too. But the problem is, I can't find a spare wheel. It is guy up, finish, khatam, khalas, over. Yeah, that's not here. So you can just put the headrest down this is the only manual work you need to do here because everything is electric so i just press a button right here lot of buttons huh? you can see there the headrest has gone down now the seat will go down in fact it will push the second row of seats ahead so that this can recline that is a kind of madness so if you want maximum space for people you press this button if you want maximum space for luggage you press this button this button is to recline the second row of seats so you can recline all the seats from here and put them back up to amazing like simply phenomenal what a comfortable guy with so much space there is a sunroof here how many sunroofs bmw is like yes we got your back you want sunroofs we will give all of them to you the disappointing part is request sensors don't work or are not there on the rear doors they're only there on the front doors and then there are plenty of buttons here as well so firstly if i push this ahead like this see the front seat is going up and now this thing will go right ahead and then it will keep rising 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 Yes, that is how it's trying to make it easier for you to get inside the rear, of course. And there are buttons here. 
So using this button, I put the seat down. Now if I want to put the seat up, I press this button and there the seat is going back up. So there are buttons almost everywhere so that it's easier for you to get in and out. It says M here, which is actually illuminated. Door pockets are huge. There's this light here for the ambient lighting. Beautiful leather treatment. If I press this button, well, that sun blind will shut. No, no, this one will shut. So buttons can get a little confusing. Okay, I press another button, that one shut. So a lot of buttons here. So let me put this down. This is the sun blind. Okay, the window is also coming down. What if I want to operate only one? So let me put this up. And then using these buttons, I can put this up and down. So yes, it gets a little confusing at times but it has all the comfort and luxury which you would expect now let's get inside in the last row okay there you can see seats are nice and comfortable headrest super raja bhai and you get a cup holder here you get a usb-c charging socket along with a hook as well meanwhile you can open this for the parcel shelf this is where the parcel shelf goes in height adjustable seat belts in the second row i have never seen such a thing let me push this seat back come on get back so yeah, it is taking its own sweet time, but the good thing is that I can put my foot from here to make some space because last row isn't that spacious, of course. And then obviously cup holders and all that is given. Glass area is small. AC vents here, but light placement on the top. I want to open this. How do I open this? There's a button here. I press this and there opens my sun blind for my moonroof in the third row. It gets five zone climate control air conditioning system. Yeah, a freaking Phi zone, which is insane, which is not working right now because the air conditioning has been shut from the front. So this won't work. But yeah, Phi freaking zone for the climate control air conditioning. It's an overkill, this guy. It's absolutely crazy. See, it's a super comfortable. See, there's decent amount of space. Under thigh support is not the best, but leg room is, I mean, headroom is fine. This is for children and children will feel really very comfortable from I mean, sitting in this place, but getting out from here is not possible because of the armrest, which means I have to push the seat. Please go ahead. This is not hard. Everything is so soft. Only thing is the seat is a bit slow. It could be a little faster for sure because I'm in a hurry always. Yeah, very robust, unbelievable comfort and luxury in this car. There's a handle to hold on to so I can pull myself. There's a hook as well, but the front seat belts don't get the height adjust function. However, the second row gets it. The third row does not, says airbags, speakers, what not has been placed. In fact, I can place the seat belt right inside here if I so wish. Let's get out, which could be a bit of a task. Now, let me put this back. Now, it will go behind Aram Se. So, these are the controls for the seat adjustment of the second row, of course. AC vents here. This is very aircraft style. And earlier models, the older pre-facelift model, actually had a 10.2-inch LCD screen here, which has been removed. So there's a USB-C charging socket, there's a mount so that you can actually put a monitor or a device or a screen or whatever you so wish. Let me actually push this seat behind. Isofix child seat mounts, of course, with those anchors as well. Really nice and comfortable seats because these are BMW individual seats, of course. Let's get inside here. Okay, second row is super comfortable. Under thigh support could be slightly better for someone as tall as me. Headroom is good though and light placement here. Meanwhile, Alcantara sort of finishing. The dashboard gets some revision too. Air conditioning vents here. Air conditioning here as well. Okay, now it's turned on. Has this one turned on or not? Let me see. Let me check. I don't know. If you can, let me know. Yeah. So, actually, I will dive behind. Yeah, it has turned on now. The AC controls. So, we're just going to turn it off right now. Yeah. <laughs> AC is very effective in this car. There's some storage space here. Two USB-C charging sockets or 12 volt twin cup holders. It says X7 here as well. You can get it in seven seater as well because there is a captain row right now here. But you can get a bench if you so wish. There's good amount of space. In fact, AC vents are placed here as well. So air comes out from there too. Air comes out from there as well. They have really focused on comfort and they have actually smashed it out of the park. That is the level of comfort this car has. To adjust this armrest, I can take it up, take it down. Okay, listen to the sound now. Yeah, it makes this nice cool sound as well. I really like it. Now, let's get to the front. Before that, let me tell you that getting in and out can be a bit of an issue when the ride height has been raised to the maximum which I have done at the moment. Okay, soft closed door function is there. Obviously, there it pulls it inside to shut it. Now, this is a car which has crazy amount of stuff. Firstly, the windscreen is so wide. It has got three nozzles, not two, but three nozzles for the windshield wipers. 
glove box is lockable of course and it's decent size with the bmw manual being around 400 pages yeah it is 463 pages or something of that sort so it's huge meanwhile it says x7 here this is a new addition so in the x5 it says x5 this changes as per the ambient light colors meanwhile door pockets at the front are even bigger the front seats are absolutely phenomenal look at the seats they're like huge in fact it also says X7 here so that, you know, people who are actually assembling the car, they do not put all the materials of the X5 into the X7 or vice versa. I know I'm being stupid here. But what do you think about the design of this car? Is it a love it or a hate it? I definitely like it. I think it looks quite cool. It has crazy road presence. There's this footboard here as well. Front doors obviously have the request sensors. Now, let's use the memory seats. I press one button and there you can see under thigh support is extending, the steering is going up because electric steering, electric seats with multiple ways of adjustment, memory function, you name it, this car has it all and the seats are absolutely crazy comfortable. You get a lot of switches here, you get a proper dead pedal which actually resembles the curtain which comes out from this area, actually the light comes out to project a sort of a curtain on the road. Why is there an aircraft style design on the brake pedal? I have no idea. This is to open the hood of the vehicle. These are the controls for the headlights and metal switches. Now what does this do it actually opens and closes the rear sun blinds so using this button you can do that as well in fact you can control the co-driver seat from here so yes i've pressed this button now i'm moving the seat ahead in fact i can also control the rear seats from here yes there let me get inside firstly okay here we are now indicator off as soon as i press this button now i am able to shut this thing first okay i am able to decide which seat i want to move so using these buttons, I'm able to move the second row of seats. That's the kind of power the driver has in this car. Let's turn off the air conditioning and which gets me to the air conditioning menu. This is for seat heating. This is for seat ventilation. But where is a massage that's missing? Again, it's a bit complex this menu because physical buttons have been removed from this car. Earlier, there was a panel here for air conditioning that has been removed. You have some buttons here. This is for defogging front and rear. This is for front or rear of the audio track. This is the hazard light button. And this is the volume controller, which thankfully is still a physical button. Audio quality is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Harman Kardon audio system, which as expected, is just unbelievable. These vents are new, the way they have been done. So this is to turn them off, this is to turn them on. So new vents have been added. It's a bit quirky, it's a bit different. I definitely like it because I think it's something new in this car. Air conditioning was turned off, why is it turned on? Now, here you get storage space with a USB-C charging socket. Meanwhile, here you get two cup holders, a USB-A, the only USB-A in this car, and there's a Mercedes AMG key as well. So it gets a wireless charging pad, storage space here, 12 volt charging socket. Meanwhile, this thing has been retained, which is a good thing. If you notice, this is this crystal effect iDrive controller. It is absolutely phenomenal to use shortcut buttons. So buttons are there. Thankfully, they have not removed the buttons. This is for the height adjustment of the S suspension, electric parking brake, auto hold function in Mercedes cars. Now, there is no button for auto hold because when you press the brake too hard, auto hold automatically activates. This is to get into park. This is the new drive selector. Earlier, there was this lever which has gone, which was much better, but I'm so upset with this. I don't like it. Traction control button, parking sensors, engine start button again has this sort of an effect and these are drive modes eco pro comfort sport there was an adaptive mode as well which has been removed from this car which i'm very upset about so yeah bmw is also removing features slowly but surely steering feels nice to hold the m sport steering of course meanwhile let's quickly use the wipers okay you can see the sprays coming out from three sides which is crazy here you get a mirror and a light same is the case here as well but you know what is the most crazy part you can actually extend it yes this extends to there's a microphone here. There's a handle to hold on to as well. This is auto dimming light control here. So you can actually control the lights. Now I'm going to be opening the sunroof because it's massive. It's huge. And this is not the maximum. I think it will open further. Yeah, that is the maximum. Now, if you notice now, there's something on the sunroof. Well, it has got the sky lounge wherein colors on the sunroof actually change when you change the ambient light colors. Talking about ambient light colors, this car has got 15 colors for the ambient lighting. Now this screen is very similar to new BMW cars. So there's nothing much to explore. There's the digital key using which you can actually share it with five people so you don't have to carry the key interior lighting has five freaking colors so i had to get into ambience okay i have turned on the cabin light let me turn that off so there it says background lighting 15 colors is a bit less because mercedes offers 64 colors of ambient lighting 
this menu is a bit cumbersome to use but it is the usual bit which you get in bmw cars beautiful navigation it's like phenomenal the quality of the navigation the screen is also so nice i love this screen and then you can easily browse through a lot of things firstly i'll get into reverse so this is the reverse parking camera which actually moves when i turn the steering wheel and then i can obviously get into various other modes for the camera yeah there is the 3d view there's a car wash view as well so this is the 3d view and let me just press this button to change the camera view attention to detail seems nice because the color of the car does match here what a camera what quality unfreaking believable bmw does such good cameras and the best thing is when you're parking the car na, somewhere so it will automatically move around to tell you from a bird's eye view if you're going to hit something that is the kind of attention to detail with the camera system i absolutely love it okay let's get into park by pressing this button android auto apple carplay are obviously wireless you can record stuff using the cameras of this car so that feature is also there you can record it and actually put it on a usb drive so this is getting too techy right now i don't know why bmw has to do all this now obviously it has got something known as reversing assistant wherein um, it's able to follow the same path for 50 meters which you had gone forward to reverse you back into your parking slot another interesting part is it has got self park and if someone comes in between your self park you can actually resume it so it will not just abandon it so that's another cool attention detail in this car now this is another new screen 12.3 in screen this has got multiple views so depending on the drive modes you can actually change the view and then i can press this button to change the content which i'm seeing here so yeah a lot of things are there m colors also ha huh? interesting and then it obviously has a g force meter it has parking sensors which are very hyper active at times oh there's a map view i can get into the heads up display the heads up display is absolutely crazy because depending on the direction i'm turning the car this thing also changes that is the tachometer actually so there i rev it and then you can see why is the tachometer so weirdly shaped i have no idea but it gets the job done these are the controls for the wipers these are the controls for the indicators using this bc button i can browse through a lot of information so this car is an information overload because there's so much information now it's un freaking believable but the dashboard is super duper wide this car is not easy to drive but it is the best car in the segment the horn oh the horn is nice and loud and i like the way the inner lighting has been done almost everywhere i love this crystal treatment i mean whatever treatment that is very premium and thankfully bmw has not got rid of this yet now it has got double glazed glass that's the reason it is super duper silent you can't really hear much from the outside let's actually turn off the car and whenever you turn on the car it does this nice effect with some sound too which is quite good let's get out there it says bmw and then it will do this effect lot of effects in this car so there is the secret storage space here for smokers to hide their cigarettes away from their wives and it tells you the tire pressure right there i keep this button pressed the mirrors obviously open and the windows roll down as well along with the rear sun blinds and the sunroof also open so lot of things happen now this is obviously the wind deflector and Oh my goodness this car is not a car it is a freaking bus let's start driving right away Right, we are all set to go. First and foremost, let's turn off the air conditioning, and we are straight away going to come into sport mode, get into drive mode. I'm not going to turn off the traction control, but let's try and get into some nice displays here, which is yeah, there you can see. So content, and then I change it into X view, which is kind of cool. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off. Where is the launch control, bro? Okay, let's try it in sport mode now. So I'm actually going to change the content here because I want a G-force meter. Because G-force meter would be so cool. Here we are, and there, launch control has left the chat. Performance is actually very good for a car which weighs around 2,600 kgs. It's super brisk. It really pulls hard and fast because this is the X Drive 40D. So the 30D has been replaced. Oh, there! Forward collision warning is ringing right now. 
even though there is no one to collide with but still it is ringing never mind it's very hyper active at times but still way better than the mercedes systems which will randomly break and are more of a hazard than they are of any use because they're very sensitive the adas systems in mercedes cars anyways this obviously has a lot of adas features but it misses out on adaptive cruise control i don't know how that happened these are the controls for various audio settings and to obviously use this particular display and change it and this is for cruise control but unfortunately these switches have been changed they're not as good as before so i was telling you about the engine options there is the x drive 40i which is the petrol 3 liter straight six produces 381 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.8 seconds which is decently quick for a car of this size but this is the diesel which is a 3 liter straight six of course and this one produces you guessed it right more power when compared to before because this is 340 horsepower and the torque output is 700 newton meters 0 to 100 kilometers per hour comes up in rather quick 5.9 seconds yeah for a car of this size that's quick and it is half a second slower when compared to the m50d which has 60 more horsepower and 60 more newton meters of torque so that was somewhere around 399 horsepower or 400 horsepower and 760 newton meters of torque so that was very powerful yeah unbelievably quick but that had four freaking turbochargers this has only two turbochargers so with all the hardware it's still doing a fantastic job fuel efficiency is somewhere between four to eight kilometers per liter depending on your driving style not four yet at least give you six kilometers per liter and it can stretch to 10 kilometers per liter as well if you drive it sanely but why should you drive sanely because this car is so much punch it has unbelievable performance it really pulls it doesn't feel its weight at all that is the level of performance and that is the level of thrust and the engine is super smooth and super refined you can't hear anything it is so refined it's absolutely unbelievable there's good amount of punch lower down because now all of the bmw x series cars are getting the 48 volt mild hybrid system at least the x5 and the x7 have it because of that it gets a 12 horsepower boost and 200 newton meters boost as well so this obviously results in a nice push from the electric motor to give you better performance and reduce the turbo lag mid-range is fantastic and the top end is also very nice here the gearbox is an 8-speed torque converter automatic which is quick relatively speaking for a torque converter yeah it gives you the right shift most of the time and then you have got paddle shifters as well so i can obviously uh, control the gearbox here i have come into a lower gear there we are in m3 it will not upshift unless and until i decide to do so 5500 rpm in a diesel it's unbelievable how this engine actually feels more like a petrol than a diesel some petrol engines actually redline at 5500 rpm this diesel engine from bmw redlines at 5500 rpm bmw you love you sweetie you amazing <laughs> developers of engine what an engine and look at the way it takes even the worst of roads in its stride so yes it has unbelievable uh, road holding there's so much grip on offer the extra system is fantastic here and then and the best part is that body roll is very well contained for something as tall and as heavy because uh, oh my god directional changes are also very quick here only thing is the lane keep assist is always <laughs> blinking here to tell me that i'm out of my lane yeah it has got adas features which are quite useful because they're not very intrusive that said i love the fact that the steering is super light it's so quick as well it weighs up to it's not say a 3 series engaging wala light or calibration is not as good as a 3 series or a 5 series but by SUV standards this is way better than anything else at this size and price trust me on this it actually makes the Range Rover and the GLS feel unfinished <laughs> because this is the level of smoothness and refinement it has and directional changes are not an issue at all that is the level of smoothness with which this car drives I love the X7 I think the X7 is by far the best SUV you can buy no two ways about it close your eyes get an X7 and there's just no competition that is the level of performance it has to offer and then obviously i'm showing the power and torque meters right here so it's a heavy car but why does it handle so well because bmw has got 50 50 weight distribution in this car yes the right weight both at the front and the balance is phenomenal i absolutely love this car because it doesn't feel its weight at all that is the kind of smoothness refinement performance and everything is so praiseworthy about the x7 it's actually based on the x5 right so it uses the the cluster architecture and it just does not feel its weight at all okay driving the city you have to be careful because it's a humongous car it's huge it's very big so the size is something which will scare you especially the width is massive it's so wide it's so wide that at times you wonder that will this be able to go through a small 
location or small gully or something of that sort so that's a bit of an issue otherwise there is nothing to complain about yeah the brakes could be slightly better yeah, and we are going to do the brake test hazard lights on Oh my goodness the seat belt really pe treat tension and there was a lot of rattling and heavy sound from the rear the attention detail is crazy you can see the indicators actually functioning here i'm straight away going to turn off traction control we are going to come back out of this menu and left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator it says dsc deactivated hazard lights off come on launch control is not working in this car and off we go little bit of wheel spin ah huh? So this car has got multiple drive modes. There's obviously the Eco Pro drive mode, the adaptive drive mode has gone. They've also removed the stop start system from this car. So earlier it had the stop start system. Now because of the mild hybrid, they don't need it anymore because they're like you know when the car turns off automatically the battery will take care. So yes, it does turn off quite aggressively to save fuel and it has an 80 liter fuel tank which is massive for sure. So then other than the Eco Pro mode which tries to conserve fuel, there is the comfort mode which is comfortable of course because this car has got air suspension. It's got adaptive dampers. The damping is the best in comfort mode, but the ride is good. Only low speed ride is on the stiffer side. Typical German type of suspension setup. But as you speed up, now the ride becomes better. And then there's obviously sport mode. So there's a sport and there's a sport plus as well. In sport plus, obviously it's more aggressive. And then there's a sport individual. So I get into sport mode right now, and I can configure individual. I can decide how I want the sport individual to be. So the changes happen to the damping, which is obviously for the suspension, which can be either comfort or sport. It can be to the steering, which is again comfort or sport, and drive time. can be either comfort sport or sport plus so these are the various changes which actually happen so yeah plenty of things which can be changed and trust me on this that it makes a huge difference in this car so let's actually get into the sport mode for the gearbox so there are three modes for the gearbox there's regular drive there's sport and there is manual as well which holds on to a gear giving you complete control of things which is good now this car actually auto lowers by 20 mm once you reach 138 km per hour but our indian roads are such that opportunity will never ever come because yeah it is what it is but on the german autobahn you need that last little bit of better high speed stability and this car has air suspension which is self leveling which can be raised by 40 mm all the way to 260 mm which is a lot of ground clearance now this b57 diesel engine is phenomenal the petrol is obviously the b58 which also powers the m340i so fantastic engine there as well so yeah bmw has some really amazing engines i think in terms of six cylinder engines bmw is doing a absolute phenomenal job there's no two ways about it now it is obviously assembled in india via the ckd route but the mother plant is in the united states of america and the price of this car will be 1.58 crores out of which you're going to pay 5 lakhs for insurance you're going to pay 20 lakhs for registration so the ex showroom price comes out to be around 1.3 somewhere around that 1.32 crores is the on road price of the bmw x5 in the x drive 30d m sport trim and the petrol version of this car the x7 x drive 40i is priced to be 6 lakhs cheaper at 1.52 crores on road mumbai so if you want to save money outright get the petrol but the diesel is going to save you a lot of money in terms of fuel cost definitely i feel that we should launch again so here we are left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor rev still 3000 rpm what a diesel engine oh amazing yeah it really really pulls nothing can beat a diesel engine that's the reason that you know why it's also flying because it has a diesel engine the new nova has a petrol so it really doesn't fly around the corners this car really surprises you but that car is going out of line because obviously handling is shit of the nova but the handling of this car is unbelievable trust me i'm in love with the bmw x7 what a phenomenal car yes the turning radius is just too much the price has risen quite a bit as well but in terms of performance in terms of comfort practicality ride and handling balance everything this car absolutely knocks it out of the park now many of you will be like the mercedes gls it's a very good car but the x7 is just better with the facelift that made cosmetic tweaks but a car which is an suv does not have a sports mode can't really be an suv it can be a cuv comfort mode it has and uh, uh, jokes aside the gls is fantastic but doesn't have the same ride and handling balance of this car now many people will argue saying that mercedes has better resale value which is true to a certain extent because mercedes obviously has a bigger desirability in the indian market because they came much earlier 1994 bmw came around 2007 so they were around 13 years too late what an amazing uh, chassis balance yeah this car really surprises you in that okay i have clicked on some buttons by mistake how do i get out of that now now we are out so like i was telling you another very interesting aspect about the resale value between mercedes and bmw is the fact that when i was looking to buy an e class right now i was actually looking to buy a w124 e class because that was the last e class which was actually 
actually made by engineers and not by accountants i realized the car is 25 years old doesn't make any sense let's actually get a newer version of the e-class for so my eyes were glued on the 211 but then i realized let's get the w212 because the 212 is coming at very attractive prices but then i was in shock because when i looked at the 3 series the f30 i realized that the cost in the used car market for the same year f30 3 series and the w212 mercedes e-class seem to be the same whereas the e-class is in a segment higher so then i tried to do more research and i realized that mercedes sold so many units of the e-class that there are dime a dozen available in the used car market and that's the reason the resale value has taken quite the hit so you can't really definitely say that the resale value of mercedes cars is better than bmw but when i was looking for the prices of this car online used car oh my god they are selling at really high prices because the x7 is that bloody freaking good in 2014 bmw announced they are going to be launching a uh, X7, a seven series SUV, and then in 2018 they started global sales. In 2019 they started India sales. In 2023, which is this year, they gave it the facelift. In fact, Mercedes started the seven seater SUV trend way before BMW in 2005 with the GL, which later became the GLS, of course. So, guys, this is my vlog of the fantastic BMW X7. I think this is by far the best SUV right now. Better than a Range Rover because it's much cheaper, more reliable, and definitely drives way better as well. Obviously. The Range Rover has that swag. But this car, you can't write it off. The X7 is that bloody freaking good. What a car! What an SUV! This is truly the seven series of SUVs, the BMW X7, and with the pump in power, with the XDrive 40D, the performance is really going to blow your mind. There, I can see so many things on the heads-up display. The kind of tech and comfort and everything, how they have managed to bring everything together so well, I simply am not able to understand how BMW is designing such amazing SUVs. In spite of being rather late to the SUV party, and they have been very 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 freaking late to get us obviously a three row SUV because even with the X5 they're actually giving us the option of last row seats which is strictly for children not that really big fat adults are going to sit in the rear bench of this car because the Kali refused to sit in the third row of a BMW X7 he needs a Cadillac Escalade and on that bombshell it's time to end thank you so much for watching please 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 pray that we get cars like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator in the Indian market because those cars are unbelievably good but we are devoid of all these amazing machines simply because american cars are not able to survive in india bye